13.2, absolute value functions and transformations, algebra one. Essential question, what are the effects of parameter changes of the graph y equals a absolute value of x minus h <clears throat> plus k? What are we talking about when I talk about parameters? What I'm talking about are these three parameters, okay? What's my a, what's my h, what's my k? So when those numbers change, and they will, um, it's going to transform your graph, okay? So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. First off, definition, absolute value function is a piecewise function given by the following rule. f of x equals absolute value of x. Um, and the quickest way to see this in application is if I was to apply this, okay, if you plugged in for f of x, if you plugged in for x, f of 3, or negative 3, rather, okay, if you plug in a negative 3 to an absolute value, you're going to get positive 3. If you plug in a positive 3, guess what? Your answer for your function, your output, is still going to be 3. So notice how you have these two different situations still give you the same outcome. Okay? <clears throat> so, that's what they're talking about in a sense of application. So, it's also known as the parent absolute value function. You'll see that in your homework, in your tests, quizzes, do nows, etc. When I was your age, I used to call it the V looking like graph or the V formation. Because it when you graph it, it really looks like a V. Example one, f of x equals the absolute value of x. <clears throat> the parent function of the absolute function. Um, so this is basically the definition in application. So we're going to complete a table just to show you the coordinates and to show you that this is how we get the whole V looking like graph. Okay, and you're going to see that. Um, fun fact, <clears throat> again, if you plug in a negative number to an absolute value, you're going to get an output of a positive number if you're only focused on the, the absolute. So absolute value of negative 3 is going to be a positive 3. Absolute value of negative smiley face is going to equal a positive face, or a positive smiley face, okay? So whatever you plug in that's negative, output is always going to be positive, okay, if it's just absolute. So let's complete the table. If I plug in a negative 3, again, out comes a positive 3. Negative 2, doesn't matter, out comes a positive 2. Negative 1, positive 1. 0 will just be 0, and 1 will just be 1, 2 will be 2, and 3 will just be 3. Notice how the negatives turn positive, and the positives just stay positive, okay? It's like uh, you clean dirty clothes, and then they're dirty, and then all of a sudden they're clean. Well, what happens if you clean uh, already clean uh, clothes? They're still going to be clean, okay? That's a great way to remember it. Okay, so let's look at the graph, okay? Now, if I graph negative 3, comma, 3, I'm going to end up being over here, okay? Negative 2, comma, 2, right here. Negative 1, comma, 1, right there. 0, comma, 0, right there. 1, comma, 1, right here. 2, comma, 2 and 3 comma 3. It's a function, it's continuous, so connect the dots, and you're going to realize, hey, now I totally understand why this guy called it the V looking like graph, or the V formation. It totally reminds me of like a group of ducks, just flying in the air, okay? Well, at least when you're plotting it. Um, but other than that, it looks like a V, okay? So, yeah. That's that's the parent function, okay? You're going to get onto something pretty soon with the idea of a vertex. 
the vertex is really that point right here. Okay, it's the pointy end of where both those rays are shooting out from. That's your vertex. And we're going to get to the definition of that soon. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is this is what it looks like. That's what your parent function looks like. Your, your homework will talk about this a lot. And it'll always compare some new function to the parent. Well, this is the parent. <clears throat> All right, so in example two, as you notice, just looking back at example one, the numbers changed. What changed? What changed? There's an absolute value of x, but all of a sudden there's absolute value of x plus 3 and minus 5. Okay, we got some more numbers. Raise yourself. All right, don't freak out. That is h. And then this, negative 5 or minus 5, is your k. So... Those are two parameters so far. And fun fact, uh, remember I mentioned A, H, and K? Um, A is really just one, okay? So it's kind of like your parent almost, but the vertex is going to be different. So let's complete a table <clears throat> just so we can start plotting some points so we can see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to do this verbally. Um, so try to follow along with me. I'm just going to be basically what I'm going to do in my head is I'm just going to go ahead and substitute in, okay, these values. So negative 5 plus 3, negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2, positive 2. 2 minus 5, negative 3. Okay, so I'm just going to be doing this verbally. So I'm going to substitute in for negative 4, negative 4 plus 3, negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is a positive 1. Okay, positive 1 minus 5, negative 4. I'm going to do the same thing with negative 3, just plug them in. <clears throat> negative 3 plus 3, 0. Absolute value of 0, 0. 0 minus 5, negative 5. So that's all I'm doing right now. I am just substituting in, and eventually I want to start seeing some pattern here. So right now, this is all I'm doing in my head. That and trying not to mess up on my, on my writing. <clears throat> all right, so let's graph these guys. Let's start to see the, the pretty picture, because the picture will say a thousand words, at least. So we have negative 5, comma, negative 3, right there. Negative 4, comma, negative 4 negative 3 comma negative 5 negative 2 comma negative 4 negative 1 comma negative 3 0 comma negative 2 1 comma negative 1 and by now you're already starting to see the V or the ducks and that's because well, you're already seeing it okay so I want to go ahead and draw my ray and my other ray. Okay? So, <clears throat> real quick though, where's the vertex? Okay? Your vertex is that point right there. Okay? Your vertex algebraically, or in the ordered pair sense, is at negative 3, comma, negative 5. And that's because your vertex, okay, your h was positive 3, okay, and your k was negative 5. So your vertex, and you're going to get the rule soon, okay, and I want to have this typed out for you pretty soon. Your vertex is always going to be at negative h comma k okay so <clears throat> that's always going to be your vertex if you compare it to your parent function your parent function goes up through here sorry my touch screen just 
kind of freaked out on me. Your parent function, remember, is at 0, comma 0, but you moved, compared to your parent function to f of x, you shifted. You went 1, 2, 3 units to the left, and that's because of your h. And then you went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units down, and that's because of your k. So notice how those two variables, those two parameters, they will um, transform and they'll move your vertex. Okay? In geometry next year, we'll start talking about vectors. Okay? And it's going to be similar kind of math. Example three. <clears throat> I'll complete a table again. I know it seems a little repetitive, but I'll do it anyways. Plug in 1, negative 3, absolute value of negative 3, positive 3, 3 plus 2, 5. Now, how many of you are already like, oh god, more tables, more of this nonsense? Um, tell you what, I can show you a shortcut right now. Okay? So, first off, what's your H? What is your K? So your vertex, okay, your vertex is going to be at negative h comma k. Well, if we apply this, negative h, which is negative 4, okay, comma k, which is 2, Negative of a negative, that's a positive. Oh, my vertex is going to be at 4, 2. Oh, that's good to know. So, if my vertex is there, what about my a var variable? Okay, well, my a, so it's going to be the number in front of my absolute, that's just going to be 1. Oh, so I go up 1 over 1. So if I was really just, you know, forget the table... You know, I could do that. I could forget the table. I could just go like this. I can go, hey, my parent function, my parent function is going to be at 0, comma, 0, up 1 over 1, okay? But my new guy, his vertex is going to be at 4, comma, 2. That's right up here, okay? And my a is still 1, so up 1 over 1. That's it. I think I just figured it out without the table. And all I needed to know was my three parameters. What's my h? What's my k? Okay, where do they shift me? Where do they move me? And then what's my a, okay? So again, if you don't believe me, finish the table. Okay, you could do that. And once you finish the table, you're going to notice, hey, it yeah, it does that. It just shifts everything over and up. Okay, and that's because of the highlighted region. Negative 4, it makes us go to the right, our vertex, okay? And again, our vertex is that little point, okay? And this guy's vertex was that guy, 0, comma, 0. So if you just know how to find your vertex and what your A is, you can graph it quite quickly. Okay. So transformations of y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k. Ah, here we are. The vertex of an absolute value function is a single point that both rays have in common. So if I was to graph it for you real quick, again, um, a vertex, a good example, is your parent function at 0, 0. 
Then all of a sudden you have two rays. Here is one ray, and here's another ray. Okay, so this guy right here, that dot, that's your vertex. Okay, and again, your vertex can be identified visually real quick just by looking at your number here, okay, and your number over there. So let me ask you real quick, what if you had um, over here a negative 3 plus a 2? Okay, what if you did that? Like you're looking at a problem and your number in there is minus 3. Well, if it's minus 3, double negative, right? So negative h, and your h is negative 3, and your k is a positive 2. So your vertex for that situation will be at 3, 2. Okay? And that's basically what I'm talking about. Unless you want to deal with tables, but tables, that's a lot more work. Okay? So focus on the whole vertex situation. All right, so um, if A is greater than 1, then the rays are vertically stretched. So as an example, okay, if A is greater than 1, what's going to happen is, let's say our vertex is at 0, 0. If A is greater than 1, let's say like 2, then our slope will be up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, like that, okay? And then on the left, your other ray is going to go up to over 1 as well. Notice how it got thinner, okay? That's kind of like Brad Pitt right there. All right, I'll call him I'll call him BP. That's Brad Pitt. He's nice, he's thin. He's looking pretty good than the average Joe, okay? Or the parent function. Or Mr. Webb. I think he's pretty average. Eh. All right. <clears throat> now, if A is less than 1, okay, then the rays are vertically compressed. Um, and addendum, slight change in the wordage, if A, okay, is less than 1, but is also greater than 0, okay? So let's be a little bit more detailed there, Mr. Webb, okay? Basically, I'm just saying a fraction, Okay, so if A is a fraction, okay, what's going to happen, and let me use a different color for a nice contrast. Um, I don't have purple. We'll use blue. Okay. If you graph, um, let's say you have um, A is 1 over 4, okay, 1 fourth. Go up 1 over 4, up 1 over 4, Okay. That's what a compression looks like. It looks like a Danny DeVito. Okay, if you don't know who he is, Danny DeVito. Okay, he's a short, stubby guy. He's pretty old, but he's really agile still for his age. Okay, but he's short and compressed. Okay, <clears throat> so that's what happens when A is not 1. It's greater than 1 or it's a fraction compared to the parent. So... Here are two examples, and we're going to go ahead and show you uh, the graphs for them. So notice how I'm going to go ahead and look at my thing, my equation, and I'm not going to really freak out about having a table. I'm just going to identify what my H, what my K is, and what my A is. So my A or my h, rather, um, for this situation, is at 3. So remember, my vertex is at negative h. So what's negative of a positive 3? Negative 3. And then my h is negative 4, so I'll be at negative 3, comma, negative 4. So I already put the point there. That's my vertex. And that's because of my h and k, just by looking at them. Okay? If you're asking why is it negative 3, <clears throat> oops, apologies. I messed up. 
to be human is to err. And if my eraser, there we go. Negative 3, comma, negative 4. Boom, right there. Okay? So that's my vertex. Um, again, I moved to the left 3 because it's a positive 3. Okay? And then minus 4, down 4. My A is 1 half, so instead of going up 1 over 1, I go up 1 over t uh, 2. Up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. Etc. Okay? Go to the left, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, okay? And you can draw your line, or your rays. We like to call them rays, okay? So that's the, pretty much the rough drawing of it. Uh, with example 2, um, what is my H? It's negative 3. What is my k? Positive 5. So according to our vertex, our vertex should be at, um, let me do this so it doesn't, there we go. Our vertex should be at 3, comma, 5. Okay? That's where our vertex should be. So 3, comma, 5 is up here. And our a, on the other hand, is going to be a 3, okay? So remember slope, rise over run. So we're going to go up 3, over 1. And then the next ray, up 3, over 1. And draw your rays. Okay? So it looks a little thinner than the green one, doesn't it? From example 1. That's because your A is 3. It's greater than 1. So you got Brad Pitt, for example, 2. And you have Danny DeVito, for example, 1. Now, if you're curious, what if A is negative? Like in this example, example 1, what if A became negative? Well, this would happen. Your Danny DeVito... We'll get all super sad, okay? He's going to get sad. And he's going to just, instead of going up 1 over 2, he's going to go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. And his vertex will stay the same, but instead of going up 1 over 2, he's going down, okay? So he just becomes a sad face, sad Danny DeVito. And that's all because, again... Your A just got negative. And this is what we call a reflection. Okay? So let's look at another example from example two. What if you took that Brad Pitt and he gets divorced from Angelina Jolie? He's going to get sad. Right? He'll get sad. Because we have a negative three. Vertex will stay the same. So his vertex is still going to be at three comma five. But... He's going to get sad. So let me graph him there. He's probably going to get angry too. So his vertex stays the same. Instead of going up 3 over 1, he's going to go down 3 over 1. Down 3 over 1. Down 3 over 1. Going to our next side, down 3 over 1. Down 3 over 1. Down 3 over 1. And then there's our very angry, sad Brad Pitt. Still skinny. Okay, but he reflected. Okay, geometry is all about this. Reflections are a big part. All right, <clears throat> let me know if you have any questions. It's a lot going at you. Let me help with your homework. And speaking of which, there's your homework. All right, pages 595 through 596, numbers 1 through 12, 17 through 21, odd. 1 through 12, solid. Okay, it's 17 through 21, that is odd. Best of luck. Make sure you ask questions.